everybody. Hope you're doing well. What we are going to be covering today is a little bit of React testing. Now, React comes baked in with some testing hooks that you can use, most notably Jest, which is one of the more common um, testing libraries out there for JavaScript. And just to, I just realized I don't have the page open that I want, uh, Jest is JavaScript testing. And the nice thing about that is if you pick up Jest, it doesn't just apply to React. You can also use it for Angular, React, Node, Vue. Um, you know, obviously you see the list here. Effectively, if you want to do JavaScript-based testing, this would be one of the frameworks that you could use for that. Similar to like how PyTest works for any Python application, not just Flask. There are other testing libraries out there, but Jest is one of the one of the more common ones. And if you wanted to get into like user interactions or things like that, you might want to look into a technology like Selenium, which will mock up a browser instance and then start interacting with DOM elements programmatically. But for this one, we're going to be looking at Jest. Now, I have a default React application here. So all I did was the NPX create React app and nothing else. And we're going to be going through this React testing tutorial because I, li I like this one because it's kind of, you know, it walks you through the basics. For the documentation in React, they have a pretty good overview as well. Um, especially this testing recipes page, which I would highly recommend you check out if you are doing a lot of React programming. Some of the unit testing aspects, you lose sight of some of these other bits of testing applications. So with a application like React, you don't just test, oh, is this HTML in our rendered page? You might need to set up um, mocked components. So maybe I'm testing app.js and I have home and I have about and I have user.js and all these other components. I haven't written the code yet or I don't want them to be part of my testing structure. So I might mock them meaning that I will pretend that they exist. We will make it work for our application. All right, and there are other bits in here too. So if you need a timer, if you need an event to occur, you know, like a user clicking something, uh, set up and tear down, what does your component need to be instantiated and then destroyed? Lots of things can happen here. And this recipes page basically will walk you through what you need to do for each of them. So here, if I have some setup and teardown stuff, what happens before this component gets rendered? What happens when we're done testing, right? Uh, some information about rendering, uh, again, mocking, grabbing external data. This is all in here, and this is all particular to testing. Again, one of the things with testing that, again, it's a very deep field. Typically, you only want to be testing one thing at a time. You don't want external dependencies influencing your test. If you're doing unit testing, you're just checking one function, one component, one self-contained unit. If we're doing integration testing, we want two or more things, but maybe we don't want the system as a whole. Maybe we don't want external dependencies, right? Again, <laughs> I could talk about this for hours, but there's a lot to it. And this recipes page will help you with some of the React com components driven, uh, you know, concerns you may have. So with that, let's go ahead and check out this React testing tutorial, because again, this will walk us through the basics for testing. This is what you should be doing. So I have created the React app already. I have CD'd into it, and I have it running. Now, there are a few points in here to really talk about. So the first thing they say is to delete app.test.js. Um, and then we're going to delete all of the information out of the home page. But this is the first thing I wanted to talk about. So in our folder structure here, so I've got React testing, um, get our node modules, public source, and then in source here, there's this app.test.js, which is basically going to make sure that Re learn React exists in the page. This is your hello world of unit testing. Okay, so this already exists. And in our page, we have this learn React link here. We are basically expecting, which this is React's equivalent of an assertion, effectively, that this link element has 
we were in React. Now this slash is in the I. This is basically a regular expression to lowercase everything. Because here you see uppercase, uppercase. Here you see lowercase, lowercase. Um, this is fine as a starting point. The guide that we're going to walk through has you delete this and put it into underscore, underscore, test, underscore, underscore. Now, the reason why they suggest that is twofold. So one, it's good to compartmentalize your application. So source code goes in the source folder, tests go in the test folder, you know, that kind of nice separation exists. Just doesn't necessarily care for simple applications. Um, at least currently, the parsing structures that it's going to look for any file in the test directory. If it doesn't find that, it's going to look for any file with .test.js, which is what we have here by default. So I've got an extra terminal open here where I'm going to run my test case. So I hit Enter just to rerun it. Um, when you first do npm run test, you'll get like a little menu that asks you what you want to do. And I think I hit 0 to run all tests. But here we see test suite, one pass, test one pass, snapshots none, because we're not doing any snapshot-based testing yet, and life is good. So let me go ahead, and I'm going to create test, All right? just lowercase, make sure I've got the right tests. I always get that wrong. OK, and I'm going to move app.test.js into there. Yes, I want to move it. OK, so this is now, sure, let's update. Ah, OK, that's a good point. So. This is one of the things which you may run into as well. In the guide here, it has you up, 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 import app from dot dot slash app. So basically, now that we are in a subfolder, we need to go up a level to reference app.js. So that's basically why this import changed to dot dot from dot. It's just Linux pathing, or I guess any pathing now. If it was just dot slash, it's the current directory. OK. So we have that. This is still running. OK. Now let's go ahead and rerun our application. I might need to restart this because it looks like it's getting caught up. Yeah, I don't know why it too passed. It must have cached something. Let me stop this, clear it, rerun it, because now there's only one dot after test.js. Yeah, now it's one. It just had something cached in the prior forever running thing. So we'll get a test pass, which is good. Uh, OK, there we go. And yeah, here is our the menu I mentioned. Do you want to run all tests, run failed tests? Uh, other options too here, right? So let's go ahead and cancel this so we don't run into that problem again. Now, first things first, we're going to update our default app. And this is just going to have a button in it. All right, so I'm going to delete everything here. Add this, and let's change show to CIS658, just to be different. OK, so import React components, just return a button inside of a div. OK, go back here, 658, button does nothing, as expected, because we haven't told it to do anything. Now, we are going to use React test renderer. So basically, what this is going to do is let me actually need to cancel this, because React really doesn't like it when you install packages while it's running. Um, this is going to snapshot or help snapshot our pages. So basically, the workflow we're going to have here is that we're going to launch our application, which we do now. Um, we're going to run tests the first time, and it's going to create a snapshot of the web page. And I'll show you what that looks like once it's created. Every single test that we run after that will compare the current state to the prior state, which is the snapshot. And if there are any differences, we'll get a report back. The idea being that this snapshot is what we want to see. And now we have made some other changes elsewhere. Does that still match our ex expectation? And you know, you could say this is a, a good or a bad strategy because maybe you're making a lot of changes. Or if that's the case, you update your snapshot, right? So. In our test file now, we are going to go ahead and get rid of all of this in here, because we're going to use the snapshot-based approach. Okay, So import React, import app. We're going to use create from React test renderer. And then we have our test case here. 
And basically what's going on is that we have, I should probably talk to the structure of this as well, right? So we have an arrow function for describe, which is describing a test suite. We're going to create a test case or auto format here. Um, so test suite is named my first snapshot test. Test case is we're going to check the button. Does the button match what we expect the button to be? Okay, so basically what's happening here is we're rendering this app component, snapshotting it, and then we're comparing the current state to our snapshot. First time it's always going to pass because we're creating the snapshot, our ground truth style. All right, so now when I go over here, um, we're going to just do npm run test again. And this is where it creates our snapshot. So we'll see it pop up over here as well. Eventually. Okay, so snapshots. Here is app.test.js.snap, and we see basically it looks similar to HTML-ish, right? There's some other things in here. So exporting the name of the, the test with the suite. Here's the div. Here's the button. Um, effectively, every time we run a test, we want this to exist, all right? So test passed. OK, let's run it again. And it should now pass because you know we're going to have that work because we didn't change anything, right? Let's change the button to CIS641, since that's another class I teach here. Test runs automatically, and we're going to get a failure because the button no longer matches, right? So snapshot failed. What failed? Well, this bit right here failed. OK, that's kind of hard to parse out, but you can scroll up a bit. Here is the diff between the snapshot. So this is where the helpfulness and the power kind of comes out of it. It will show you exactly what's different in the HTML. OK, so I kind of skipped ahead a little bit there because then they want you to change it from show to hide. Okay. Um, now, let's say that this is the state that we want. Well, we would have to update our snapshot. And in this guide, they give you a little recipe for adding to your package.json to update your snapshot. Effectively, all you're doing is React Scripts test update snapshot. We're just going to have a little alias to that. So let's go into our package.json. Here we go. And in our scripts, we're going to add in test colon update. All right, so we're going to update our snapshot. So let's cancel out of our test. I'm going to run npm run test colon update. And that's just going to run this line here. And then we're going to get a new snapshot. Which let me pop that open here. So we should see this magically update to 641. Yep, there we go. I didn't do anything, it automatically ran. Okay. So now let's interact with things. So we're going to update our component to make this toggleable. And this is where things are going to, we're going to have to tweak it slightly because this is, there's either a typo or it's out of date. I don't remember exactly what it is, but I'll, I'll show you the issue here. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to be lazy and copy and paste everything in here, but scroll down a bit. So we have still have our component, but now we have a notion of state. Our button click event is actually going to do something. And so let's change this to CIS 658, change this to CIS 641. Basically, this would be hide or show from the guide. Um, effectively, what's going on is if show is true, show 658, else show 641. Um, we have the state variable called is active. When we click, we're going to change the state of is active. So basically, button gets clicked, handle click will fire. We're going to set state where the state is going to be this is active variable, and we're just going to toggle it because it's a Boolean value. Now, this is where it's not going to work. So I click it, not going to work. We're not going to see any console messages in here. Probably using the dev tools would show us that, but that's that's better for another day. 
Okay, the issue is that this.props.show doesn't exist anywhere. It's is active and it's in the state variable, not props here. So if I change this to this.state.isActive. So if it's true, we should see 658. If it's false, we should see 641. So it's currently false because that's how we initialized it. I click it, now it actually works, right? Because we're checking the correct variable. Um, and if I changed its initial state to be true, it should start off with 658, which if I refresh, there we go. Again, just basic Boolean logic here. All right, our tests are going to um, let's run our test suite. I'm just curious what's going to happen because I haven't tweaked the test case yet. This is another point that's worth talking about while this is loading. If you make significant code changes um, and your test cases don't accurately reflect that, the question would then be, is your test case any good or not? Right? Because this test case was written for the initial state of the app. Now we have significantly extended it. Is that still the actual behavior we want? That's where you'd have to reach out for your requirement specifications. Is this what the page should be doing or not? Write your test cases from that, write your code from that, or whatever your process is for your environment. There are a lot of processes. Okay, so now let's update our uh, test script. So what we're going to do now is create two snapshots. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this to show you the new creation of them. Um, so let's update our test script. So the imports are fine. Let's format this a bit. Now we still have our first snapshot. So basically, does the output match what we expect? The second one is going to have, let's see, a bit of code here. So again, test suite two. So we're changing the button from show to hide. In their example, we're changing from 641 to 658. So we are going to get our component. We're going to get our instance, which is going to have access to the component state and all that. So the first thing we are expecting is that our is active value is false. And what we currently have is is active is defaulting to true. So we should see this fail immediately. And then the question is, is what's the correct behavior, right? Different problem. Okay, so button should be false. Again, this is an ex uh, an assertion here. We are then going to click the button. So instance dot handle click. Right, that matches here. Instance of this thing dot handle click. Okay, then we're going to expect the state to be true. And at that point, we're going to check to see is our rendered code what we expect it to be. Does the button have the correct text inside of it? So. Again, this is going to fail because we have flopped the logic inside of components. But now let's update our snapshots. We'll see two snapshots in here because we have two separate test suites that are rendering. Um, and it might consider this to be one test suite. Depends on, depends on your vocabulary and how you structure what your tests are doing. But if we open this snap up, we should see, did I not save something? Let's run this again. Okay, it failed because maybe it just failed immediately and didn't create the second snapshot. Let me, uh, let me fix this really quickly here because we should be seeing two snapshots in there. Let's make it pass first. Maybe it's like bailing out. Yeah, OK, that was the issue. Um, that's what I get for trying to extrapolate. <laughs> OK, so we have two snapshots in here, right? So we are checking to make sure the state's good. We are checking to make sure the button's good. Now in our .snap file, here is our toggle activity. Here is our first snapshot. Now they look pretty similar except for the text inside of there. So default state, button has been click state. The script will then compare to see doesn't match what we're expecting. When we start out with is active to be true, 
we have then broken our logical flow of our application. And we'll see a failure in here. Okay, so test suite failed, test case one failed, one passed. So basically the one that passed is the initial state. Um, and let's see, let's scroll up a touch in here. So it's telling us exactly here, this expectation was violated. Okay. And again, the application here itself that I'm showing you is not a big deal. It's more so the logical flow of how you're writing your test cases and matching expectations and all that fun stuff. So with that, we can also run code coverage, which is the last thing that we'll talk about here. I'll probably have split this video up into two by now. Um, code coverage is one of those things where it's a nice indicator, but it's not the end all be all of testing, much like all of these other ones kind of use them together. Code coverage is a metric that tells you, is there any line of code that doesn't, that is not covered by a test case? So code coverage is every single line that does you know something important usually not variable declarations but like uh, assignments actions things of that nature branch coverage would be is every path of execution covered the idea here being that if you have code that is untested you don't know what it's doing because it's never been executed it's never been exercised so again code coverage it's a good metric to check because maybe you have like an area of dead code that is never run unless if it's run in one very particular circumstance. And in that case, hopefully it does what you think it should be doing, right? But we can run, again, it's, this is a new build end or a script entry here. So test colon coverage just runs our test hook with dash dash coverage on it. So let's run npm run test colon coverage. And then we'll get a report saying how many lines of our code actually were run or not. Code being the application, not the test case. Up, 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 up. Okay. So we have an uncovered line of code in app.js. So 75% of all of our statements were covered, 50% branch coverage. Um, so here is our metrics. So. Line number 10 is not covered. What is line number 10? Interesting. I wonder if we change this back to false, if that will then update. Because the last time I did this demo, I got 100% code coverage. I wonder if the whole bailing out thing is what's causing that. Yeah, OK. So when our code runs as expected, every single line is accounted for. Okay, snapshot failed because we have a stale snapshot that's not indicative of reality. But, you know, let's, let's be comprehensive about this. Let's update our snapshot so that it's the correct version. Correct version. We're going bug hunting. It's, it's fun. It's, uh, it's an activity, right? Okay, so that's done. Good, good. Let's run our coverage and see if we still have a snapshot failure. It's one of those things with uh, automated, well, not automated testing, but like test script runners. If they bail out early, sometimes the reports look angrier than they actually are. Yeah, so here everything passed just fine. OK, so unit testing, code coverage, a little bit of stateful interaction, all kind of the bare minimum of what you can be doing for testing. Anyway, this video has gone on long enough. Highly recommend you check out this, at least the testing recipes page to get a feel for what you need to do for everything else. Um, the demo here is more snapshot focused, but you know you could extrapolate that to be whatever kind of testing you want. Okay, have a great day. Bye everybody.